across the Caribbean. Just listen to the winds tonight. That is Irma tearing across the island of Anguilla, a Category 5 storm right now. Winds of 175 miles an hour. On the island of Barbuda, nearly every building and home damaged or destroyed. And as we come on the air tonight, Irma is now plowing into Turks and Caicos, the most dangerous side of this hurricane hitting there. This evening, a hurricane watch is now officially in place right here in South Florida. Are the buildings ready, the windows, the cranes across this city? But first, ABC's Lindsay Janis leads us off with the devastating images already. She's in San Juan, Puerto Rico tonight. Tonight, the images now emerging of the utter destruction Hurricane Irma left behind. Buildings and trees ripped apart. This communications tower snapped. Hundreds now homeless. It was the worst time in all my life. And I would not want to see another hurricane like this again. Barbuda's prime minister telling ABC News it's as if a bomb was dropped on the tiny island, one of the first hit. Well, my main concern right now is how we're going to survive after this. St. Martin next in Irma's crosshairs. Shipping containers tossed like toys, boats crashing together. At least 14 now dead in the storm zone, including 16-year-old Xander Venezia drowning in rough surf off the Barbados coast. Irma's death toll expected to rise and scores more injured. Coast Guard teams like this one have been flying in and out of the Virgin Islands rescuing people. Our cameramen on one of those choppers capturing scenes of destruction as Irma moved across the Caribbean. We met Canadian college student Alex Demore, badly hurt in a fall in St. Thomas, airlifted to Puerto Rico for treatment. We lent her our phone so she could call her family. Mama? She and American student Maddie Gortat leaving the island with one pair of flip-flops between them and little else. The pair describing how they rode out the storm. We just didn't know if the roof was going to come off at any moment. So we were, we were yeah, we were praying the whole time. Irma now moving in on the Turks and Caicos Islands, large portions of them at an elevation of less than 10 feet. The storm surge could be double that. I'm anxious about the storm. Uh, I've never been through a hurricane. California firefighter Josh Livingston there celebrating his birthday, now hunkered down and bracing for a Category 5 monster. We've been watching some of the destruction on the other islands. You're kind of waiting for it to hit this island. And Lindsay Janice joins us now from San Juan. And Lindsay, nearly a million people without power, hundreds of thousands without water tonight. And you were saying that authorities told you it could be months before power is restored there? That's right, David, and here's the reason why. There are hundreds and hundreds of trees like this one downed across this island. This one actually has a power line tangled up in it. David? Lindsay Janice leading us off tonight. Lindsay, our thanks to you, and let's get right to this new storm track tonight. Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z is back at the Weather Wall in New York. And Ginger, you've been studying this new shift in the track late today. What does it now mean for the U.S.? It could mean catastrophe, David, especially for Southeast Florida. Let me take you straight through this storm. Hurricane Irma still a Category 5 over the Turks and Caicos. It'll go tonight. Southern Bahamas as we go through Friday. Then it's Friday into Saturday where it's just south of Florida. And it goes into the Keys early Sunday morning, 5 a.m. Sunday. Places like Key Largo, Homestead, and Miami feeling the surge, feeling the ridiculously strong winds. And up just west of Savannah between Orlando and Melbourne through the day on Sunday into Monday, it will keep going north as a strong category one and then tropical storm this cone now involves indiana and ohio the storm surge watch goes from jupiter inlet over to bonita beach the keys are included you've got hurricane watches for all of south florida as you said and one note we stopped the time here at sunday afternoon miami beach with a wind gust of 127 david just incredible and while we have you ginger we wanted to show everyone at home the image that really drives home the real danger here in miami and south florida when it comes to the storm surge you just mentioned we know that miami floods easily look at this tonight if you had a three foot storm surge those areas in yellow would be underwater a storm surge higher than three feet and watch this the areas in red go completely under and that that's why they're so concerned here in miami tonight ginger authorities are trying to get the warnings out Water is one of the most powerful things, and this doesn't even take into account high tide. High tide happens just after midnight and just after noon. This could take that surge of 5 to 10 and make it 8 to 13 very easily. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.